Hey everyone, my name is Riley and in this video I am going to be showing you how you can set up HubSpot for any business. No matter if you are a solopreneur or a business with thousands and thousands of employees, this tutorial is going to be relevant to you and show you exactly the settings that you need to set up HubSpot in the most effective way. I will be showing you how you can set up your HubSpot account and then everything that you need to do on the back end to make sure your HubSpot account is set up in the correct way. So if that sounds like what you are interested in, then keep watching and let's jump right in. So the first thing that we need to do is of course set up a HubSpot account if you do not yet have one. If you want to sign up to HubSpot, you can use the first link down in the description and you will be able to create a completely free HubSpot account. Okay, so once you have clicked on that link, you should be taken over to this screen right here where you can go ahead and get started with a free HubSpot trial. So all we are going to do is click on this button to get started for free and then we can now go ahead and choose which industry your company is in. To be completely honest, these questions are not super super relevant they don't really change anything about how HubSpot works, it's just more for HubSpot's side of things. So you can effectively choose whatever you want there, I still like to answer them as honestly as possible, but once those questions have been answered, we will be taken over to this screen right here, where we can choose to either sign up with Google, Microsoft or email. So just go ahead and choose one of these methods, I'm going to go with email, and then click on verify email. Once you have entered that information, it's then going to ask what is your company name. So just go ahead and type that into here. And then once you have entered your company name, click on next. It's then going to ask for the company website. So once again, just enter in your company website and then click on next. We can then choose the data center location and this is effectively where all of your data that you have inside of HubSpot is going to be stored. Now you want to go with the data center location that is closest to you. It's not super super important at first when you don't have much data but when you start collecting hundreds and potentially thousands of email address and customers then it is going to make a big difference. So you want to go with the one that is closest to you and this is really going to speed things up. So if you are in the US or Canada, go US. If you are in Europe or the UK, go EU. So I'm going to go with EU and then we can click create account and it's then going to take us through to this screen. From here, we just want to go ahead and set this up manually. We don't want anything basically done for us. We want to set this all up by ourselves. The reason for this is because HubSpot is going to take us through to this tutorial area and it's much better that you start from scratch. You can go through this and you can click on start tasks and go through and HubSpot will essentially walk you through all of the steps that you need to get started with HubSpot. Now in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can set up your account in the correct way and get started as a business owner. So what we are going to do is for now, we can just ignore all of this. Once you are done with this tutorial and you have everything set up in the correct way, then you can go back and do all of this. So the first thing that we are going to do is go over to the settings. Now, sometimes they can be in this bottom left corner or sometimes they can be up here at the top. So wherever you see settings, just go ahead and click into settings. And this is going to take us over to the main settings area. Now, the first thing that we are going to want to do, especially if you have a team and you want your account to look more professional, is go ahead and add in a profile image right here. So we can just click on this and then click on upload image and then choose a file. And then I'm just going to go ahead and add this image right here. That's way too zoomed in. Okay, and that looks pretty good. So that is now uploading as we speak. We can then go down and change potentially the date, time and number format. If you are from the US, then leave this as you like. However, for me, I'm in the UK. We have a different date system, so I would like to get that changed around. You then want to go ahead and add your phone number in here. So I'm going to do exactly that. So just go ahead and add your phone number in right here. Then at the bottom, we can also choose a default homepage. Now the default homepage is going to be the first homepage that shows up right here. 
after this guide has gone. So what I will do is I will just go ahead and turn off the user guide. And this is where we can choose the default homepage, just like we could in settings. So I, I just want to warn you, I just want to say here, don't do this yourself. Go through and actually take care of this user guide. I'm just going to turn it off in this example. So we can choose to set this as ads and I will just show you how this looks. This is going to take us over to the ads dashboard. And as soon as we log into HubSpot, this is what it's going to take you to. Now you can go through here and really take a look at what is going to be the best for you. Maybe it will be companies, deals, your inbox. But what I would recommend and what I always have as my HubSpot dashboard is this dashboard menu right here. So if I go ahead and save this and I now go back over to HubSpot, it will then give me the option to choose from all of these dashboards. Now dashboards are super, super helpful. For example, I can choose this marketing channel performance right here. And if I go ahead and add this, let's just create this real quick. What this is going to do is this is going to give us an at a glance entire overview of all of these different sections of HubSpot. So we can see here contacts most recently created by source. We can see form submission totals, landing page submission totals, and we can go ahead and delete certain ones if we don't want them on the report. And we can also add reports up here. So this is definitely something to play around with. And this is what I would recommend as setting up here in the default homepage. It just makes things super easy. You can have an at a glance view of your entire HubSpot dashboard. Once you have this set up, we can then go up to the top and now we want to go ahead and connect up an email. Now, this top section right here is where we can add a personal email. So you can use this to log, track, send, and receive emails into the HubSpot CRM. So instead of using your email day-to-day, -day, using whatever tool you are using, whether it's the Gmail business suite, whether it's iCloud, what you can do is connect this up and you can send and schedule emails from inside HubSpot, log email replies, and everything like this. So just go ahead and click connect personal email. Then you can choose whether to turn on inbox automation. I would recommend this and click connect your inbox. So go ahead and enter in your professional business email into here. Just in this example, I'm going to keep this as a Gmail. I wouldn't recommend doing this when you're actually setting up HubSpot, but I'm just going to do this as this example. It's then going to take us through to this area so we can click on connect to Gmail or whichever provider you are with. And then you can go ahead and sign in with your email account. Once you have signed in, we can go ahead and click on continue, allow this to all go through. And this is now connected. So from here, we can just back out of this. And just like that, we now have our business email connected into HubSpot. We also want to go down here and just add an email signature. So click on this and then simply type in your name just like that. And then we can save this and we now have the email signature added. We then want to go back up to the top, click into calendar. And then in here, this is where we can connect up the calendar so that we can send meetings directly from HubSpot, schedule them directly on the calendar. Any meetings that you have already booked on your calendar will also be available in HubSpot. So super, super important to connect this as well. So we can just click on connect your calendar and then choose where you want to connect the calendar from. I'm going to go with Google once again, and then we can click connect your calendar. Once again, just sign in with that account. And just like that, the calendar is now connected as well. So let's go ahead and refresh. Just make sure this is all looking good. And just like that, we now have this all in. Make sure under account settings, calendar sync and meeting schedule pages is turned on. And then you can also go down and choose the default meeting links. Now let's go up to security here at the top. And right here, we want to first of all add a trusted phone number in case you get locked out of your account or something like this. Just click on add a trusted phone number and add your phone number in right here. Once that is entered, just click on next. And it's going to send you a six digit code over to your phone. So just go ahead and grab your phone and enter in the code that it sent. From here, we can then click on done. 
And then this is super important as well. We want to set up two-factor authentication. No matter how big or small your business is, super important that we do this to drastically increase that account security. So just go ahead here and click on set up two-factor authentication. And then we have a few different options right here. So we have the HubSpot mobile app that you can go ahead and download. I don't usually do this. I like to go with a text message. So I will click on this. It will then bring up the phone number that we just entered. So click on next. And then once again, it's going to send you another six digit code. So just go ahead and enter this in. Okay, so we now have all of the general settings set up. We have a profile picture, we've secured the account and everything is looking awesome so far. Next, let's go down to notifications. In this section, we can see email is the first one. So you can choose if you want to be notified by emails, you can turn this on or off. And then we can even get a more granular in detail view by going down here and we can see exactly what you will be notified about. So this blog draft comment, you can turn this off if you want. Choose exactly what you want to be notified on. Personally, I go down here and I just turn most of this off. Maybe ads I would leave on actually. Go to Academy, turn this off. But basically just go through here and you want to customize exactly what you get sent to your email. If you leave all of these on, you can get a lot of emails from HubSpot and it can be pretty annoying. So I just like to leave deals on make sure security is on, but the majority of them I actually turn off so that I don't get spammed with a bunch of emails. From here, we can then go over to desktop and choose if you want to be notified on desktop. Once again, I just turn all of these off usually because they can be pretty distracting day to day. So I just go down and turn all of these off right here. And then once that is done, we can go down to account defaults. And this is where you want to add in your company information. So in here, just go to the company name and enter in your company name, then enter in the company address, company address line two, city, state, zip, and country. This is super important as this is legally required for when you send emails through HubSpot and also billing and things like that. So make sure all of this is entered in right here. Next, we want to go over to branding and this is where we can set up a brand kit. So just go over to this button on the right hand side and click create a new brand kit. Then let's just call this G Force North. Set this to the name of your company, then save. And right here, this is where we can go ahead and set up the brand. So let's click into this. This is where we can add the brand logo. So let's call this G Force North. So I'm just going to call this GeForce North logo. The rest of this isn't super important. And then right here, this is where you want to upload your brand logo. So I uploaded mine right there. And then you can also upload a favicon. What I usually do is just title this the same, just like that, and then upload the exact same thing. Then we can click on save. And just like that, we now have the branding all set up. Next, we want to go down to users and teams. And this is where you can invite new users and employees to your HubSpot account. Right now, you can see that I'm the only one using this. I have one active user, inactive user, and we have an overview of this at the top. To create a new user and invite somebody to your HubSpot account, just click on create user right here, then go for the quick invite option, and then simply enter in the email of the person you would like to invite. I'm going to invite this email right here. And then you can also choose to make them super admin, which essentially gives them more permissions. I'm going to leave this on and then click send invite. And as you can see, this invite for this person has now been sent. So this is going to show up, but as you can see, the invite is still pending. So all I'm going to do is go over to that email and show you how this will look from the point of view of your employee. So I am now in the Gmail account of the person I just invited. They will get an email that looks like this that says join your name in HubSpot. So all they have to do is click join HubSpot, go through and create their account. And then once they have created their account, they will have access to your HubSpot and they will be able to make changes and help you out on your HubSpot account. Next, we want to go into integrations and click on connected apps. 
This is where we can now go ahead and connect up any other apps that you want to connect to HubSpot. So to do this, just click on visit app marketplace in this top right corner. And this is going to show you all of the different apps and integrations that you can connect with HubSpot. For example, if I'm using MailerLite as my main email marketing software, I can go up to here at the top, type in MailerLite, and as you can see, MailerLite is right here. So all you have to do is find the app or the integration that you would like to connect, click on install app, and then you can go through and connect this to your HubSpot account. Make sure to do this with all of the apps that you would like to integrate to get this out of the way and have everything integrated before we go any further. The final thing that we are going to do is just go to security on this left hand side. And this is always a good idea to check every month or so, even when you are further down the line and you have already got into using HubSpot, this is going to give us some security health checkups. Like right here, you can see that although we set up two-factor authentication, right now it's not required. So it's on the account, but if somebody wants to log in, it's not required. So all we have to do is click on manage and then go on yes, make sure this is required. And then one user is enrolled in two-factor authentication. Let's just manage this. Then go to the user that we added earlier. Next, send. And just like that, we send an email to our employee to tell them to set up two-factor authentication. We can also go down to low risk and sort all of these out as well. But these, these aren't too bad. Just make sure that the high risk ones are all taken care of. So that is how you can set up HubSpot for your business. If you found this video valuable, don't forget to smash that like button and tap that subscribe button. And until next time, take it easy.